It's okay if I smoke marijuana. Okay. Who are you? I am Mike Dean. Mike Dean, welcome to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Oh, thanks for having me. It's really cool up here. We have some BC bud, you know, just hanging out. And we are in your bus. Can you say anything about your bus? Because we are a guest in your bus. Travis Scott in this bus. This is a, you know, it's the hood bus. It's not very pretty, but it sounds great, you know. You heard birds. I've mixed and mastered birds in here. Do I look at you or the camera? Uh, just at me is fine. Or the camera, whatever you want. <laughs> okay. Who else, Head? Who's been on this bus? This is uh, Coffee Bro Head. Quavo, Travis Scott. Oh, two chains. Two chains. Uh, Taco, Jasper. Who is Head? Who is Head? Head, he's, he's my, my homie. He's, he works with me on tour. He's, he grows marijuana. And to welcome you to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, I have a book for you, the Houston Rap Tapes. 3-2 on the cover. By Lance Scott Walker. Am I in here? You're not in there per se, but that is a companion piece to amazing, an amazing photo book that he put out. What can you say about the early days of Houston rap? That is a lot of Houston rap for you to read. Wow, man. I don't really need to read it because I lived it, but I'll try. What can you say about the cover? Oh, it's crazy. It's 3-2, man. <laughs> what can you say? It's amazing. How about Willie D? Because Willie D is in there. Oh, Willie D, of course. That was one of the first people I worked with, with rap a lot. Well, first person was Bushwick, and then uh, Scarface and Willie D, like all of those solo albums. Willie D's great. I just saw him in Houston the other day at the show. And I would like to ask you, Mike, about your early work with the Odd Squad. Oh, fuck me. Because on the back, we have, if we look closely, Mike... Mike Dean. Yeah. yeah, I played keyboards on here. I mixed it. I, look, engineered by Mike Dean. Ooh. And N.O. Joe. N.O. Joe, that's my homie in Houston, yeah. We, we, me and N.O. Joe basically, and Scarface, basically made this sound, you know? But these guys, of course. Devin the Dude. Rob and DJ Styles. Devin the Dude, yeah. It's like, pff, man. Okay. What was it like in that era of 93 rap a lot? It's an interesting story, actually. This this album, before this album, I caught one of my kids, you know, smoking weed, and, and we, me and my wife back then, he quit smoking weed for like four years, and then we caught him smoking weed, and I started smoking weed again right when I made this. So it was really good. I was really high, you know. It was great. It was a lot of weed smoking, a lot of, a lot of bad weed, you know. We smoked a lot of, oof, backyard boogie. So thank you, Odd Squad. Definitely, yeah. Thank you, Devin the Dude, Rob, Jug Mug. What were you like, Mike Dean, way back when in your band, The Deaf Squad? What is going on there? <laughs> this is the first, <coughs> this is the first uh, rap group I produced called The Deaf Squad. I was just actually just telling Kanye about this the other day. <coughs> they were crazy. What was the name Def all about in Houston? Because there was a Def Squad and there also was the Def Four as well. What can you say about Def Four? Nice and hard. Oh my God. I mean, they weren't with us, but they were fucking one of our Houston groups. Yeah, they were great. What can you say, Mike Dean, about Def Squad, the first band that you produced? This is, they were inspirational to me to learn, you know, learn about hip hop, you know, like about the turntable shit and all that. Like I knew how to like produce and play funk music, you know. And I met this, I met Burst here in a in a music shop, and I just got my first drum machine. And like he's like, hey, come over and make some rap music. I was like, okay. And then of course Kenny. He was he was a coach at Freeport High School, and he was a student football player. He was in the Nation of Islam, interestingly. He passed away, God rest his soul. I don't know who these characters are. They look like <laughs> they're, they're homies, yeah. That was your first group, the Deaf? It was all like the Deaf Squad. The Deaf Squad. You know, way before the Deaf Squad was, you know, Eric Sermon and all that. It's the real Deaf Squad. I was curious, Mike Dean, what can you say about this particular release, the fifth Ward Juveniles? This is dope. Wow. Dean's Mix. I was like flooded into a studio during a hurricane in like 1994 or 5, something like that. 
and OG Dewey got me to produce this new group, and I just made these three remixes because I was just snowed in and had like 24 track machine and like a Macintosh computer and my ASR. Just made this shit. It's pretty dope. Now that is the Fifth Ward Juveniles. What is the deal? The Fifth Ward boys as well and mike dean are the uh, the more og of fifth ward groups well there's you know there's ghetto boys of course they're fifth ward but then fifth ward boys came next this is swing wide situations yeah i made this beat i made this beat at the original hippie house studio where it was a house in the heights in houston and just a bunch of hippies hung out and smoked pot we had a projector and we like watched natural born killers and made beats and this is the record we made there one of them OG Dewey with Low Life, 007 E Rock. Those are like my brothers. We all used to live together in California for a while. What is your favorite ward? <laughs> Fifth ward, yeah. Baboom. Baboom. Or third ward, really, is where I came up playing music at. Going way back, I want to ask you about the importance of the Ghetto Boys. They're the, the base of Houston music, the base of. Really all Southern music, you know, all the, everything that they're doing now. This is the early, the real early Ghetto Boys, right? Uh, yeah, this is like when Jay Prince first put them together and they were like at the car lot in Fifth Ward. What do you think about the Ghetto Boys early time? What do you know about that? Big Chief, Tony Randall. This is like before Scarface was in the group, right? I can't have my glasses on, but yeah. Before Scarface and before Bushwick. Well, Bushwick was a dancer, but he isn't pictured on that. Exactly, yeah. What do you remember about that era of the Ghetto Boys, the very early Ghetto Boys? It was just crazy. It was a phenomenon in Houston. Did you ever go to the Rhinestone Wrangler? Yeah, a lot, yeah. Used to hang out there with Big Chief. We used to go there and like listen to our records, you know, watch... Watch things, you know. And Rahim. <laughs> You've done your research. Rahim, the vigilante. <laughs> vigilante. Vigilante. What song did you work on? It's a pretty cloudy time for me. How did that differ from the time now with Travis? Not much. We got better computers, better equipment, the weed's better. We know more about what we're doing, so we don't be in the studio so long. Wow. This is just crazy. This is your life, Mike Dean. I just came through Houston about a month ago on tour, and everybody came out. It was like a rap lot reunion. It's cool. What samples have you taken away? What samples have you taken away? What do you mean taken away? Because you love to take away the sample, right? A lot of good samples. I don't know. I've taken away lots of Isaac Hayes samples and Pink Floyd samples and shit like that. You love Jerry Reed, though, right? Country. Yeah, how'd you know? Yeah. Yeah, um, love Jerry Reed, like Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings, the whole Outlaws shit. What can you say about these groups right here on cassette? And we start here with Choice on Rap A Lot. <laughs> this was the first song I ever mixed for Rap A Lot. This is where I met Pimp C and Bun B because they were recording at the same studio as Choice. Choice is choosy, the big payback. She was great. <laughs> female rapper it says warning very explicit lyrics <coughs> yeah all she rapped about was her pussy and like being a being a hoe and, and stuff what is this the white moog do you have this is pretty rare isn't it it's just a moog voyager i mean it's they made a lot of them but it um i think this is one of the last white ones that's going to be around and it my other white one was stolen my watch the throne white moog and it had the blue lights so they retrofitted this one with blue lights like the old ones. Why should people care about Mike Dean? Why should people care? Because like I'm the best. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mike Dean. Keep on rocking in a free world and do do loot do. Uh, fuck you. No, not fuck you, but fuck you. <laughs> Hang on, let me do this. Let me do the Tyler the Creator. <laughs>